This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Hey, everybody. This is Steve. I just want to let you know the latest radio. on our podcast. Uh, hit us up at EILF Movies. That's everything I learned from movies on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we're also on Patreon if you want to check that out. But our homepage is with the Age of Radio Network at ageofradio.org slash everything I learned from movies. And if you're looking for some amazing art, check out my wife's Etsy page at untidyvenus.etsy.com. All kinds of great stuff there. Also, follow us at PodCartFest, that's P-O-D-C-A-R-T-F-E-S-T, for our periodic art and podcasting festival that we're going to be hosting. It's uh, it's actually pretty cool. Check it out. So yeah, on that note, let's get to the show. Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes a gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy with your friend Steven Izzy Lindsay Hahn started acting when she was four years old in various commercials and then has continued her career in dozens of television shows and movies uh, including one we just talked about le- a couple months ago, Village of the Damned, where she played Mara, the leader of the Damned. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> She's also been on the Addams Family Reunion, Star Trek Voyager, uh, True Blood, and now has a very successful directing career, including a new movie uh, now available on Tubi called Hanky Panky. It was actually shot right here in uh, Utah, in the nice little city of Heber by Park City. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Han was kind enough to join us. On everything I learned from movies. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Lindsay? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. We are great. Sorry, just uh, setting up the mic here. We got kind of a a, a unique setup. We'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing a headset and the microphone. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> And please don't be offended if we don't turn on our camera. It's not because we don't love you. It's because we are on satellite internet and it severely slows us down. Oh, maybe I should turn off mine then so that it's all faster for everybody. Let's do yeah, that. It should be good. It's usually just on our end where it can yeah. become an issue. Whatever but... works for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Okay, excellent. So, yes, yeah, so have you been? Ah, uh, Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I was just at a museum with my two kids, so I'm a I'm a little sun baked from being. And we we mainly we we spent most of the time on the lawn of the museum. Let's be honest. But <laughs> oh, nice. So, w- which museum, if you don't mind my asking? No problem. LACMA. Oh LACMA. yeah, the L.A. County uh, Modern Art Museum, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went there a couple years ago. Yeah, pretty cool little place. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. It's under half of it's under construction right now, but they still have pretty good lawns and one of their wings open, so it's pretty fun. <laughs> nice. And that's uh, uh, that's right there by like the uh, La Brea Museum and the tar pits and everything. Yeah, right? yeah, it's yeah. sort of like a little museum corner. There's like the Motion Picture Museum there now, and uh, and the Peterson Automotive Museum. It's all right there in that little. Oh wow little corner yeah. <laughs> yeah we definitely gotta check that out next time we go to la yeah we we, we went there in march but uh yeah we we uh, already had a pretty busy schedule so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> nice. excellent well yeah well uh, thank you for joining us of course here on our, uh, our podcast everything i learned from movies thank you, um thank you. our our usual episodes we normally talk about you know bad to questionable movies and we still end up loving them uh <laughs> we actually talked about one of your movies in march uh during a uh, marky oh. march we were talking about mark hamill movies uh village of the damned and we even said during it you and mark were kind of the high points of that movie for 100 <laughs> oh, percent. that's so nice thanks <laughs> um but yeah i guess i uh, just kind of getting to know you would you mind um just kind of letting us know like where you grew up, what your family life was kind of like? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up in Los Angeles, but I was born in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> my parents are from Las Vegas. Um, 
And uh, my dad was a musician. Um, his father was an opera singer who sang at the Dunes Hotel. And my uh, my grandmother, my mother's mother, was a uh, cocktail waitress in the Vegas casinos and was pretty tight with the mob. So they were very, it was very fun. My parents were children of very fun people. Um, and then they met. And uh, yeah, my dad moved out here with his band. And um, so we moved, so I came out here when I was about four months old. And then uh, my dad ended up being an air supply. Yeah. And um, yeah, and touring a lot. And uh, I got into the business through a family friend who worked for a children's agency who, while my dad was on tour, got him to like, get my preschool to sign me out to her and she took me on my first audition and then called my mom and was like she booked the audition and this kid's got it <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was like a bartender at the four seasons and she was like what <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah I, I started at four and a half and my parents had no idea what they were getting into and um and then I just I just did a ton of commercials and TV movies and all of that kind of stuff. And and I remember um, I <laughs> I really liked horror movies from a really young age. My dad was is a is a huge movie buff and probably showed me horror movies that I shouldn't have seen as early as <laughs> I did. Uh, but I like loved Poltergeist and stuff like that. And and I remember praying to God that I could be a villain in a horror movie. And then, uh, and then I got the call for the audition for Village of the Damned. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So how? Um, I mean, you know, m most of us we you know go to school during the day, blah blah blah. But when you're like on the set and everything, like how was how how was learning and kind of just being in that environment and stuff like as a as a little kid, you know? <laughs> you mean like learning re real stuff? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, arithmetic and you know, stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, it, you know, um, actually, they're really good about it now. And and when I when I was a kid, um, the set teachers are pretty awesome and um, really uh, multi skilled. You know, <laughs> um, so basically, you have to get a certain amount of school hours in every day um in order to be able to work that day and um you can only work like 20 minutes at a time and then they have to pull you for school again you can only work on set when, when like it changes when you get older at different ages it's different amounts of time but that's basically how it is um mm -hmm. so you actually get a lot done and when i was going to regular school um we got more, I got more done when I was working on set than I did when I was in the classroom. Because, you know, when you're in a big public school classroom, they, they're they like wrangling 30 kids, you know, yeah. most of the time is spent wrangling. <laughs> so um, I actually, I, I got a lot done when I was on set. I loved, and I loved that one-on-one -on -one time. So then we eventually ended up moving me into homeschooling. Um, because it was really like socially disruptive. That was what was more disruptive was like when I would leave for a month or two months to go do a movie and then come back, like all the kids, there would be new friendships and they would be mad that I left and mean to me when I came back. And, um, and then there would be like weird, like jealousy. It was, it was very strange and, um, and I loved it. So, I mean, I didn't love that part of it, but I, I loved, I loved the work. And, and so we ended up just, I just started homeschooling. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Uh, you, you were describing like the onset thing and um, I'm picturing like the scene where like Christopher Reeve was like teaching you guys on set, you know, for, for the scene. And then like he steps off and the real teacher comes on for an hour or so. Basically, basically. I mean, yeah, we, we did school in that room one time. Oh, nice. <laughs> the school room. It was like, well, it's already set up for it. They were shooting somewhere else, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's very strange. It is very strange. So like, and, and okay, and now you are real children, and now you are fake children, and now you are real children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't don't want to get confused and just you know terrify the the the, the real math teacher, or geography mm -hmm. teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Nice. And and you were in uh, a couple episodes of uh, Star Trek Voyager, which is uh, yeah. one of our favorites. But uh, but but uh, that was weird. It was like, oh, yeah, it was like what, once a season over the course of like three years. Was it just kind of like in between different things or? Yeah, well, they they cast me twice, you know, as, as two different characters, which they didn't yeah. do a lot. And it was a really big deal um, when they brought me back as the um, as a doctor's daughter, because they were like, are we sure this is okay to bring her back? But the re- they they realized that it was, the way that they rationalized it is that both of those characters were from the holodeck, like they, they were holograph characters. So they were like, maybe she's like a stock character. You know what I mean? That <laughs> yeah, then like a stock the, the NPC program brings yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, so um, that was very cool. I loved, I love working on Star Trek. I, was, I love it now. I loved it then. Um, and yeah, it, it seemed like it did kind of happen like, oh, every, every year, you know, <laughs> for a little bit there. Um, and, and I wish, you know, maybe <laughs> they could have found more holographic children for me to play. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was really great. It was really great. I remember I, um, for the first one, it was a um, Victorian era thing. And I, they made me this huge one of a kind dress. And I like spilled sauce all over it the first oh. day at lunch. And it was so horrifying. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and they were so nice to me. They were like, it's okay. Like I'm a kid, but I knew that they were just like, in hell and I was mortified I was like I'm a big kid I know not to spill you know <laughs> they're like oh, that's okay we, we get this all the time uh yeah. guys I need a Riker syndrome <laughs> <Yeah. this>. <laughs> <laughs> terrible oh my god <laughs> nice. uh so yeah but, but yeah you were gosh you're in like dozens of like you know different shows and stuff growing up like you know we have Malcolm in the middle uh mm-hmm. alias all that kind of stuff are, are there any that like stand out as like just i don't know a really fun and just incredible oh experience well th- both of those were wonderful i um those were very fun shows but especially alias because i was such a big fan of alias so being on that show and um and i got to kiss michael vartan i think they cut it out i don't think it made it into the final one but i was like this is amazing because i had <laughs> such a crush on him i loved the show and i loved him and it was like my dreams coming true like i was like this is what i've done all of this for um <laughs> but yeah i you know my my life has been so blessed i i i have so many experiences that i'm just like God, if that had been the one experience of my life, that would have made my life, you know, and I've and I've been lucky enough to have so many of those experiences, like getting to work with Superman or getting to work with Luke Skywalker or, you know, (laughs) I also really loved Cheers. So like being able to work with Kirstie Alley was insane. I met Dick Van Dyke, you know, like I worked with Dick Van Dyke when I was a kid. Like, who does that? It just you know it so many of these movies that i grew up with and like i got to meet the people and work with them and and they came to life in front of me you know so um it's pretty cool pretty cool little life excellent uh how is it okay um i am <laughs> we are huge tim curry fans in this household yes we are and so when i saw like wait you were on the adams family reunion show with tim curry <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> How was it? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I didn't have any scenes with him, but he was in the makeup trailer when I was in the makeup trailer. And I went up to him and I was like, I love Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's like my favorite movie with my dad. And he was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's completely inappropriate for that to be your, your favorite. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't get it. I was like 12 or 13 or something. And I was like, what? It's fine. I can handle it. It's such a great movie. <laughs> he was like mortified. <laughs> and see, all I would have wanted to talk about was Congo for like 45 minutes. Oh and he'd be God. like, oh, yeah, I got to go. So I got to get to say it. <laughs> oh, he's so amazing. He is just like the talent that that man has and and the impact that he's made in culture is so cool. 
Well, and uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, coming from a musical background with your father being with Air Supply and other bands and stuff growing up. Um, I also saw uh, in the movie Broken Bridges you were in, you got to, got to sing the title song with Toby Keith. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, uh, he played my father in that movie. Um, and then, you know, I signed to his record deal and then we went on tour together. I was on tour with him for a year. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Crazy. Yeah. How does uh you know, being on being on tour and everything compare to you know you know being a movie star? I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, tour life's you know it's intense. It's not for everybody, and um, I realized that it wasn't for me. Like I, I love traveling, but I like to. The part that I like about traveling is getting to experience new places and being in a new culture. And being on tour was like, it was like a weird groundhog day for me because yeah. you, know, you would travel at night and then you were like surrounded by new concrete walls. You know, I never really had any privacy and some people really love it. Like I I, I don't mean to be talking badly about it because I, I have close friends who are touring musicians who absolutely love it. And like my dad absolutely loved it. But I just... I don't know. I, I missed my family. I missed freedom. I didn't really feel like mm -hmm. I had a lot of freedom on tour. And um, when I do movies and stuff, it's, it's a very different thing because like with Shrooms, the movie that I did in Ireland, like I got to live there in a small town for three months, you know? And so even though I was away from my family, I got to have like this new cultural experience and made friends with the cast and we got to explore together. And, and even though I was working 12 to 16 hours a day on that <laughs> movie, I still had time to then look around and, and, and I like the feeling of a movie set kind of crew m more than, than the sort of, I don't know, moving around feeling of, of a touring crew, even though I loved everybody that I was on tour with, like n not anything personal about anybody. It's really just the, the type of life that it is. And maybe I just like yeah. to move more slowly, you know? Um, I like the yeah, summer yeah. camp feel of a movie set, you know? Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. A little more intimate. It's, it's kind of like, like traveling on business. Like if you're going to a location for a month or two, you get to know things a little more, the people a little more, as opposed to jumping, you know, spending half your time, like in the airport, going to the next place. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I understand it. Yeah. 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 So I, it made me go like this. I thought that I wanted that life and it was really wonderful to have that experience so young because I realized, Oh, this is not the dream that I thought it was. And I think I'm going to adjust. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> Well it's, well, it's good to know at that point. I mean, you're still, gosh, at that point, well, probably not even 20, like still very young, like still trying to figure out 21. the next. I was 21. I was 21, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was it was nice to realize that. But to come home, everybody thought I was out of my mind because, you know, I walked away <laughs> from a record deal. I walked away from, from a, a life that was basically being handed to me on a silver platter that like, you know, I grew up with musician friends and everybody's like, this is what we've been working for. Like what you're out of your mind, you know, <laughs> and yeah. nobody really got it until some of my other friends started going on tour. And then they were like, Oh, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get it now. All right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, and then I, I guess after that's, is, is that, sorry after going on tour there was that when you uh had the uh the little character arc there on uh true blood yeah it was it was a couple of years after the tour that yeah but then i i got cast on true blood and that was wonderful that was really great um i yeah the the cast and and being able to work for hbo i mean all of that stuff and it was such a fun show it was it was like dark and silly and wonderful and just like everything that I love, you know, and sexy. It was really, really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely a little different than like Malcolm in the Middle over there. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, with, with being, uh, I, I think you're in uh, like seven episodes, core and IMDb, like, like having a longer, uh, a longer run and stuff on the show. Was that more what you were looking for, like? Uh, like you were talking about being in the the same location a little longer, like with the Shrooms movie and stuff. That yeah. more what you were going for. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, honestly, being a supporting, having a supporting role on a television show is kind of the dream. Like once, once you've experienced the life of all of the things, the lifestyle of, of a supporting on a tele on a successful television show, like critically acclaimed television show is like the greatest thing ever because you don't carry the whole show on your back. You get to go in and have fun and be creative with that show because it because it was HBO and because it was doing so well, like we didn't have to rush through scenes like a lot of TV is rushed, you know, like we really mm. got to take our time like it was a movie set, but it lasted for longer. I got to have my life like it was that was a dream. It was wonderful. <laughs> I would do it all over again, obviously. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. And then um, I guess basically from there, you started getting into like writing and uh, directing and more more behind the scenes kind of stuff, too. Uh, was that just kind of a, a natural progression, kind of just picking up things while you were on sets before or? Yeah, yeah. It was something that actually when I was 14, I did a movie called um, The Color of Friendship and the director, Kevin Hooks, pulled me aside and he was like, you think like a director, you should you should be a director. And, um, and I was like, ah, that's so intimidating. I've never thought that I wanted to do that. That's like, I, I could carry one character in my head, but I can't carry like a whole movie, you know, <laughs> like, it's yeah. a totally different deal. Like to carry every character's perspective in my head and the vision and da, 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 da. But it like got my mind working. And he was like, just when you're on sets, just start to pay attention. And he was like, and, you know, go when you're not on the days that you aren't working, go to set and observe. And I was like, okay. So after that point, anything that I worked on, if it was okay with the director, I would show up on days that I wasn't on camera and I would just sit in video village and watch. And, um, and so I did, I picked up on, on a lot. And then when I was 25, um, I started to, to direct and I just started to direct music videos for myself and like my friends, you know, so that yeah. if I, if I messed it up, it wasn't like crazy. And it was basically like putting myself through some kind of, you know, uh, film school, basically. And all of my friends who had gone to, you know, uh, AFI and like USC, they were like, you, you already know everything. Like basically what we do in these programs is they just give us set experience. And like, you already have all of that. You already know everything that they would be teaching us all you need to do is now start to do like hands-on directing. And so, and that was what, uh, like Patty Brannock who, who directed Shrooms and, um, you know, other directors told me. And, um, so, so yeah, so that's what I started to do. I just started to get my hands dirty and I, and then I started to direct short films and they were doing well in festivals and, and then I started writing and here we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we watched uh, your your latest Hanky Panky, uh, the oh, wonderful man. horror comedy that was uh, shot here in our back, uh, or you know our our neighborhood, Heber, Utah. We're just uh, about forty five minutes from there. Oh my um, gosh, I didn't know that. Nick didn't tell me that. Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, love we, Heber. <laughs> yeah, we we know Heber from you know they got the Ice ho uh, Hotel out there, and yep. of course the legendary movie Troll Two was shot out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we consider it our sister movie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, how was that? How, how, how was shooting there in Heber? I, it looks like in the middle of winter for, I, I'm guessing, several months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we were at um, a pretty high elevation. We were uh, a couple thousand feet above Heber, like in those mountains up there. Um, and uh, it was cold. And there were like five blizzards while we were shooting. So it was <laughs> uncharacteristically thick, uncharacteristically cold, and so perfect for like our low budget movie looking so much higher budget <laughs> than it was, you yeah. know. 
Um, I grew up going to Hebrew my whole life because my my dad's family is from Utah. Yeah. Um, and Hebrew is one of my dad's favorite small towns. So um, I used to go up there once a year and then we got a place close to there. So I, I know Hebrew actually really, really well, like from the time I was 14, like really well. So it, it was a blast. Like I, I had always wanted to shoot something there. And in fact, I had started writing something else to shoot there. And Nick was like, finish that script, finish that script. And I was like, I'm trying. And he's like, okay, we're going to have a race. Whoever finishes a script in Hebrew first gets to shoot it. And he <laughs> finished Hanky Panky first. So I was like, damn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we shot Hanky Panky. But I plan on shooting in Hebrew a lot because um, <laughs> people might hate me for that. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember um, with John Carpenter, you know, the people of Point Reyes hated him for bringing so much production to town. So I, I do keep that in my mind of like, I don't want to do that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, once you guys start uh, bringing in, you know, $200 million worldwide grosses and stuff and get yeah. the, uh, you know, it was the movie tourism people coming out to take pictures next to the tree where Harry the Hat showed up or something. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you might have a few movies until that's the issue but <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly we'll try to squeeze them all in there <laughs> nice so 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 the okay so so the script for hanky panky was uh it, it sounds like it was basically written on a dare no is a is a race basically. to see yeah. who could was yours also a horror comedy or was it Mine like a different not genre? A comedy <laughs> <laughs> not a comedy it's like a very small intimate um horror psychological thriller um and uh and it's still in the works it's just it's it's taken new shape a couple of times <laughs> uh, well we'll be looking forward to that in uh, uh 2026 or something yeah, like that yeah yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> excellent but with uh with hanky panky of course you also star in it as well as direct and um uh, it, it, did you help with the writing as well, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. It, this was a super collaborative effort. I mean, Nick was um, the spearhead as far as like getting it done and definitely doing all of the hard, the hard work, like sitting down at the computer and writing and making it take shape. But then, um, you know, I would read it and give him notes and I, you know, you know wrote some stuff in it and and then we got up there and we did a lot of um, improv and, and then, you know, we would work the scenes out and they would change shape. And so, uh, you know, everybody on our cast is incredibly talented and most of them are writers also. So it was very collaborative um, and everybody had such great ideas. It was mainly, you know, just figuring out how to fit all of the great ideas into one thing and make it all make sense. And like, is this crazy? Are people going to get this? Is this going to just seem like one <laughs> giant inside joke? You know, <laughs> like we only, only us will think are funny, especially now that we've been up in this cabin and we're all a little like cabin fevery, you know? Uh, but I think it's, I think it worked out. It seems like some people get it, which I'm kind of shocked by. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I would say so. Yeah, de definitely having watched and everything, it's it, it definitely has that feel of like, yeah, very everybody kind of working together, a lot of improv stuff going on, but very funny. Also, it, you know, it, it it has the horror tropes and everything. So there's, you know, mm -hmm. definitely uh, some darker elements and stuff in it. But yeah, the, the comedy really comes through. And sometimes with horror comedies, it gets kind of point like, oh, OK, come on. But no, the, uh, guys, it's on Tubi, uh, Amazon Prime, all the others. Make sure you go check it out. <laughs> it's fun. I, it definitely has like a lot of like, yeah, like horror Easter egg kind of things. Yeah. And the comedy is genuinely funny and quite absurd sometimes, but it never feels forced, which yeah. I really, really appreciate. Thank you so much. Wow, that is such an incredible compliment. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. We worked really hard, you know, I mean, it, it's Based silly and it's dumb, but like we really tried to like, you know, razor sharp, ride that razor sharp line of like, of like ridiculous, but grounded, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and having watched a lot of like independent horror movies and stuff too, like the, the cutting, editing, the pacing of the jokes and everything. Yeah. It, they, they all come across fantastic. I Thank recommend. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> uh and and your character in the movie mm -hmm. um any inspirations that you drew from uh for her um well the first half uh, is definitely chrissy from three's company 
Um, I, <laughs> I had to try to figure out a way to differentiate me from, um, you know, the other blondes in the movie, like they, those, this is like basically all of my best friends, by the way. Uh, yeah, but I, yeah. I am told that I look a lot like Christina and a lot like Claire a lot of the time. And so I was like, oh my God, we're all blonde. We're all here. How the hell am I going to help people tell us apart? You know? And so my character sort of developed into this like weird ski bunny high pitched voice person. So for the first half, it was that. And then the second half is basically Skeletor, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was, it was, Not to give anything the, the away. Voice definitely but, uh, came out with that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And um, I saw you. There's this other movie, uh, Holy Trip, that I guess is coming out later this year. It's like a road trip movie. Holy Trip is that on my IMDb? People do this all the time. <laughs> Does it look like me? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I think Claire uh, was like the star of it when I looked it up. Uh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! We that is so funny. Is that going to get a release? It's called Holy Trip now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hold on. That is so funny. I'm looking at my. I'm looking myself. As we know, up IMDb has right everything together. <laughs> um, yeah. So wow, I did that a very long time ago. Yes, with Claire, and uh, that is a zany, kooky movie. Also, uh, total. That movie is like almost totally improv, and that was a very weird experience. We'll see how it goes. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so, ah. <laughs> that was like we were. Um, we were just like in a Winnebago, uh, driving up and down uh, between here and Utah, and shooting in like stolen locations. And it would that movie was that was a trip. That was a weird one. <laughs> so oh, <nice. laughs> we'll have to we'll have to reach out to Claire see how that's come along then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Because <laughs> we lo we love that area between uh, LA and Utah there along uh, I fifteen and <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. I love so it too. I, and and that was actually I mean my <clears throat> my friend wrote that movie and um and starred in it and so he got all of us to be a part of it. I, I should say that <laughs> so yeah. so that's why I'm like oh my gosh it was such a kooky movie. Um, and uh, so we all just were kind of like, okay, Mark, sure. And we like jumped on the bandwagon to like do this really zany <laughs> movie. I met Claire um, through UCB and I met, and she was friends with Mark. And so uh, I met them both at the same, at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Nice. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Obviously, you have your uh, your Heber horror movie uh, that's going to be coming out in twenty twenty six or whenever coming mm -hmm. soon. Are there any other like current projects or like dream projects that you'd uh, you're looking forward to doing? Or gosh, um, yeah. I mean, there's. I'm I'm also working on this. Ugh, I can't really. I don't really know how much I can talk about it, but it's a it's a revenge horror movie that I actually got hired on to write before the pandemic and to direct and um and then it got pushed um and then i had two kids <laughs> and, um so now we're starting to form that back together again um and possibly go into production but i like i'm not i'm not sure how much more i can say about it because it's not like things aren't solidified yet we just started to talk about it again um uh, but I've just been really focused on since I have had kids, I've just and and it was during the pandemic, I was like, well, this seems like and this is kind of how I live my life is like, I don't try to fight against what life is bringing to me. I just sort of go like, OK, well, this this season seems to be telling me that I need to like really take a break and and um, and really focus on being a mom, you know. And so that's what I've been doing. And I sort of plan on doing that for the first three years of both of my children's lives. So I'm not really going to be jumping too much back into gear for like another year and a half. Um, okay. I might direct this movie, <laughs> but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. But I am like writing things on, on my own and like getting things prepared for, for hitting the ground running in about a year and a half. So yeah. I, I just yeah. don't really feel like I can talk about too much. <laughs> 
yeah, keeping active, keeping the the things in the fire, but m- maybe not just jumping in immediately. That exactly, exactly. Like I, I am privileged, so privileged enough to be able to really be a mom to my young children. And um, my mom had to work so much when I was younger. And so I really, really, really see um, the, and value this opportunity to be there for my kids, you know, and yeah. my mom, my mom hated so much that she had to work so much when I was young, you know, so I, I really love that I can, I can do this for my children and for me, you know, so, uh, yeah, so I'm just taking a little bit of a breather and it's really nice to have hanky panky come out during that breather, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, yeah. When priorities get all shifted and everything, it's good to, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have all but the I, but I do plan on having a life. <laughs> I do plan yeah. on having a life when they, when they go back to school and I'm very excited about it, but I'm also really cherishing this time. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I going to the LACMA and La Brea Tar Pits and everything. You're all yeah. right in your backyard there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's like the coolest, my kids are the coolest kids. I mean, not, you know, not against any of your kids if you have any. I'm just saying. My kids <laughs> oh, so... our kid's pretty cool. He's yeah. about two and a half and an Australian cattle dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And of course, uh, the the name of our podcast is Everything I Learned from Movies. Um, I guess just in kind of wrapping up, are there any lessons uh, learned through your life in the movie industry that you would like to pass on to others or perhaps help inspire others? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Um, (laughs) Feel free to take a moment. I know it's kind of putting you on the spot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, this is the thing that I have always loved about about making films and about being an actor in films is um, being able to really jump into someone else's skin and being given the permission to really see things from their perspective. Even, even if it's sometimes taboo things, you know, it's as an actor, it's your responsibility to do that. Um, But I think it's really developed Um, especially being able to do it from such a young age, it's developed a kind of humanity um, that I'm, I'm really, (laughs) at least I think that I have, and I hope that I have. And I think that making, telling stories, like that's, that's why telling stories is, is so sacred and why, you know, of course, like I, I am happy to be making such a silly movie. And I think that even, to make such a silly movie like Hanky Panky even does kind of do this. Like, I, I think that um, it, there is, there is healing that can happen and, and, and uh, opening people's minds that can happen, you know, and even just like at a time like this, when we're in a world that is kind of against itself, it's nice to um, all be able to sit down and laugh at the same thing, you know, and be like, oh, right, we are human, like, this is the human experience. And um, I just think that, you know, just dive in. If you're watching a movie, let yourself really get into it, you know, <laughs> D- yeah. dive into the character and um, dive into the story. And um, yeah, let you give yourself permission to really get into that world because I think that it's not, you know, some people say it's like disassociating when you watch movies, but I, I think it's something else. I, I think it's really connecting to, you know, different people in a different kind of way and opening your awareness up more. So don't be hard on yourself for binge watching. <laughs> <That's what laughs> I mean. Very well said. And uh, I, I guess on that note, do you have like, maybe at like top five favorite movies or, you know, oh my God. Some, some of your favorite movies. Okay. Yeah. Some of my favorite movies. I'm just going to say what comes up, up immediately. Um, Hedwig and the angry inch. Oh, one of one. my favorite films of all time. The music, the filmmaking. Oh God. I could just watch it on repeat. Um, uh, Mary Poppins is incredible. It stands up. Now that I'm a mom and I've rewatched it, it is so good. There are so many levels that are so incredible. Uh, what else? Oh, there's one of my favorite animated films of all time is this movie called Gay Paris. And it was made by the people who did Tom and Jerry. 
Um, it's not very well known. Judy Garland is the lead voice and it's so beautiful. It's like, it's got the Tom and Jerry kind of animation, but then the backdrops are all like inspired by Parisian um, artists. It's like, it's so beautiful. It's such a good movie. And it was like too racy or too simple at the time. Like it was, the critics didn't know what to do with it. So um, I love that movie. Um, what else? Return to Oz which I'm sure. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we watched that about a month ago. It's, yeah. it's, still, it's still fantastic. <laughs> oh, good. And then maybe when Harry met Sally, like just a perfect movie also. So there's your range. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of musicals and a lot of, uh, okay. Yeah. In, in, interesting. Uh, I, I, I don't know, a little, a uh, little risque for the time. I, I, yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I like, I like myself a little risque. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank um, you so much. If you ever want to come on the podcast and talk about one of your favorite guilty pleasure movies or anything like that, we would love to have you and Nick on. Already um, have it at the top of my head. I would love to talk to you about that. Which movie? <laughs> which movie? Ah, Spice World. <laughs> oh my yes. God. Yes. I have never seen it, but I hear I know. incredible I, things. I love it. I'm here with you, girl. We will <laughs> defend that movie to the death. It is so good. And I didn't even like Spice Girls growing up. All of my friends loved the Spice Girls and I didn't get it. And then I saw that movie and I was like, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I you know what? Movie. Honestly, same. I was like, I, I don't I don't know. I don't get it. And then I watched the movie and I'm like, well, now I have to buy the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good movie. I love that movie so much. I have a lot of guilty pleasure movies, but that, oh, so good. Oh, okay. Well, since you brought up, do, do you have like two others? Um. Yes. I have The Stuff. Yeah, we <laughs> love The Stuff. <laughs> the stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I've got some pictures of us to show you. <laughs> oh my God, really? Yeah. <laughs> we had some friends we... uh, ask us to do some advertisements for The Stuff. <gasps> oh my god so we did a little photo shoot yeah. around our house like during lockdown <laughs> oh my god that's so good i would love to do some commercials for the staff i should we why have i never done that uh, <laughs> oh my god that's amazing <laughs> now, now, now she's gonna work it into uh her uh her horror movie somehow yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you thank you too thank you thank you too we're gonna have just an ad for the stuff <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you ever need just extras just walking in the background uh, that are close to heber at a moment's notice just let amazing us know. oh my god we're gonna take you up on that you'll be surprised <laughs> be careful what you offer <laughs> <laughs> well the way i see it if i gotta watch spice world though <laughs> i'm gonna yeah, make you yeah, yeah. the movie get to get to yes yeah. get to privilege uh, roger moore is in it okay right. <laughs> yeah it's amazing it's a legitimate film <laughs> legitimately incredible elton john i mean it's great it's great oh elton john too okay we're watching it tonight no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right Lindsay. well thank you so much and uh yes, yeah we'll you. we'll definitely keep in touch and uh i'll i'll figure out how to send you the uh <laughs> the stuff photos here in a bit <laughs> awesome i can't wait i really can't wait <laughs> have right, a good day you guys or good you night too. Have a good night <laughs> bye yeah, bye What's going on in the Congo? Things look pretty bad in the Congo right now. I hope you folks have lots of money. Did you get the diamond? No! The diamonds are here! Go ahead, guys! Stop eating my sesame cake! Eight, one, three, two, three. Who's got them? Tell me! Relax. You're in better hands than you should be.